Hi everyone, welcome back to McDonald Bagpipes YouTube channel. Um, it's cold up here again today. I've upgraded from the blue jacket to the blue jacket and vest. Um, snow season well and truly underway. I was actually up at the snow yesterday, had a bit of fun, but I'm getting too, too old for snowboarding. I sort of feel like I've been beaten up now today after falling over quite a lot. So today I'm just doing a quick video on shortening a blowpipe. Ta-da! So, um, my friend Ian Lyons at uh, Lyons Bagpipes sent me this blowpipe that needs shortening. Um, so that's the, if I hold that like that, look at that, magic. Uh, but that's the full length of the blowpipe. But Ian's actually put a piece of tape on here showing me the shoulder, where that, essentially that shoulder of the blowpipe now needs to be down there. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just go through the process of doing that. Now, oh, there you go, a bit of focus. So once again, this thread here is generally 30 TPI. And if you see that in that little corner there, if I can get that against a better backdrop, yeah, you'll see that the, the profile or the diameter narrows a little bit there. And before I started learning how to thread things, I'd often wondered why I had that little difference in height. Well, that basically, that narrowing of the diameter allows somewhere for the threading tool to actually finish and come out. Um, because if you just ran the threading tool up to there and lifted it out, not only would the thread just sort of taper upwards and not be parallel, but you could also run the risk of the thread chaser coming along, hitting the shoulder, fouling up, and then jumping and then wrecking the thread that you've just spent time making. So I'll go over to the lathe. I'll set this up as a uh, time lapse again for you, and I'll go through the process, and then um, we'll show you what it looks like afterwards. So I've just stopped the time lapse there. I'm just going to uh, cut this thread in. So I thought uh, I'll do a normal video and you guys uh, might like to see the way I go about actually cutting the thread. I just use this thread chaser. Now, I don't know if I said at the start of the video, but I said, oh yeah, these are all 30 TPI. <laughs> Guess what? It's not. But um, I do have the appropriate size thread chaser uh, or thread cutter, whatever you want to call it. Um, I actually don't know what TPI it is. It's close, it's really, really close to 26, but that chaser that I have doesn't quite fit. Um, this one that I've got, <laughs> all the details have been shaved off the top when it got cleaned up at some stage. So yeah, but I've got the right size thread chaser for it. So now I cut my threads in at about 250 RPM on the lathe. So I'll just start doing it and I'll try and talk through it whilst I do it. I'm, talking and doing things at the same time. I am a man after all, multitasking is not my strong point. So yeah, basically when I cut the threads, I start off here, just get a nice solid start to the thread. Um, I usually have a little bit of a ever so slight taper in that corner there, just to help the thread come on. And now I'll just go through with pass after pass, just ever so slightly making the thread longer each time I go through. Now, I'm not putting a lot of weight on that. I'm just trying to let the tool do its thing. Um, growing up, I can always remember my dad just saying, let the tool do its job. So don't force it, all right? So, coming along there. That's pretty good. There's a little bit of a, a wobble in it. Which is not ideal, but I am doing it by hand, and there is a little bit of tolerance. So, and as you can see, where that little shoulder that I've put in, that allows the tool to come out. And there's a bit of dust going on here because I don't have my dust extractor going so you can hear me talk. But yeah, that's looking good, a nice solid thread. So I'll just stop that for now. Now, I also use these feeler gauges quite a lot for quick measurements. Um, when I need to do stuff finally, I use digital 
um, measurement, but actually, well, the first couple of sets of bagpipes I built, made, I actually just used these two tools mainly to measure everything. There wasn't any digital measurement at all. So, but anyway, look, I can get, I just basically get the feeler so it slides ever so gently over that thread. And then, no, it's not quite going over this one yet. All right, so that means I need to take it down a bit more. So I'll do that now. 250, no, 320, that's too fast. I don't know if it's psychological, but I like to get it as close to about 250 as I can on the digital display. But anyway, so there we go. Thread's slowly coming together there. Now, one of the reasons why it stopped like that is I was applying a bit of pressure. And because I'm just running this up between two centers, I'm not actually running it in a chuck, holding it firm, it will stop. Um, if I really, really tighten up the pressure on the tailstock, I might split something. So you have to run that balance between getting something to fit nice and snug and then working with what you've got. So, stop there again. Just chase it off that shoulder. There we go. So you can see there, just slightly, ever so slightly, once it's bite at the end. Stop him again. I can almost get that to go over. Not quite though. So a little bit more. Hope these videos aren't too boring for you guys. So that's sliding over now. So that's pretty good, but I still had to force it. Now a little, little bit more relief in here for the shoulder. So I'm gonna just cut that in a bit more. I reckon just half a dozen more passes. And this would be pretty good, even if that. Pretty good, close. So what I'm gonna do now, if I find a little piece too, I'll just quickly run just a little bit of sandpaper over the thread just to take that sharp edge off it, um, just so it's not so fragile. So just quickly give it a bit of a tickle with that. All right, take this off. Let's have a look. So, no, it's not quite going on there yet. It's wanting to start, but it's just a little bit thick. As you can see, the old one going on there. Okay. So, it's not too bad though. It's pretty, I can see by eye that it's pretty close. Just sit that down. Sit this back on here. One more thing I want to do actually there. That, I'm actually going to take that shoulder off a little bit too, there. Alright, so here we go. Another couple of passes, slow the lathe down. So now you're at the point where you don't want to cut too many times before you feel it up, just to see, here we go. So it's starting to go on there. So you can see, that's pretty, I mean, yeah, it's nice and snug, but once that's too tight for my liking because once the pipes start getting played, a bit of moisture gets in there, that expands, and that will just be yeah, so much pressure on that joint. 
Um, all right, so I reckon another couple of passes. See where we at? 240, 260, 260, that'll do. All right, so. Stop there. Yeah, that's about right. So that'll easily go on there at this point in time. Not really using a lot of pressure at all. All right, the tenon's still slightly long. I've got that gap there, so I've just got to shorten the thread now. But it's always easier to shorten something or cut it shorter than have to try and stick a bit back on. So there we go. I'll give it one. All right, so I had to do a few little more turns there, guys, but I stopped the video so it's getting a little bit boring. So here we go, just tidying up the last bit of that thread. Like I said, just sanding it down just a little bit just to make it less fragile. Clean her out, drop my tools. Now if I take that off the lathe, you see there, got the mouthpiece, threads on nice and easy and consistent. Right up, and then snug as a bug, bang. Blowpipe shortened. All right, so uh, we've shortened this one. It actually happens to be just on the edge of the bead, which is really good. Of course, it'll never look as nice as it does coming out of the factory because they have the nice flat shoulder up to it, but um, I can't really do much about that. I'm not gonna reprofile the whole piece. Um, so there you go. Um, I hope you guys find this video interesting. Um, I don't know if I'm going to upload it or not. I'll do some editing and see if I can actually make it flow. I tend to waffle a lot and get distracted. So yeah, but anyway, shortening a blowpipe. Uh, that one's done. Really get sent back uh, down to Ian. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. I'll speak to you later.